Hi and welcome back to the Indusoft Web Studio video training series. This video is going to cover trends. So what are what are trends and what are we going to cover in this video? Now trends can be used for lots of different things and, and it's a very powerful yet still easy to use feature within Indusoft Web Studio. It can be used for comparison of values, toolware, maybe on a metal cutting machine, show to temperatures, flow rates, stuck sensors, uh, even data acquisition type applications, basically to visualize uh, trends and um, what you might not be able to see by the real data alone. We're going to cover real-time trends, historical trends, which would be saving to databases. We'll, we'll enable the trend worksheet and show you how to start saving those and um, work with numerical or XY plots, uh, plots that are not time-based on the horizontal axis, but uh, uh, also uh, uh, numerical, uh, so it's kind of uh, dot plots, if you will, or XY plots. We'll also add in the SPC charts and uh, go through a lot of the different configuration options in the trends. So let's get started. Um, one of the things that I, or a few things that I've done before I started the video recording to prepare for this is I've added uh, a couple of screens here by opening up the template screen that we've created in a previous video and saving that as trend 1 and I also saved it as trend 2. Uh, make sure that uh, as we get started, if, you, if you're following along, that you don't start this on trend 2. Start on trend 1 here so that uh, we keep the screen names the same. The next thing that I need to do is I need to add this into my navigation. And what I've done here is I've copied this animation button down and I've reduced its size and I've made this button go to trend 1 and trend 2. I know we're going to have a lot more buttons here so I'm just going to do this to conserve space a little bit here. I'm going to close this. The other thing that I've done is uh, while I was offline is I created a trend.csv file in Excel. Now if you don't have Excel you don't need to uh, have Excel to do this. You can use a notepad to do this for example. I'm going to open this up in Excel to show you that I have some values here. There's, oh, let's see, 40 or 50, 52 different values here. And what I'm going to use this for is when I'm going to do the XY plot, uh, I'm going to use column 0 here, or column A, as the 0 column that will be my X axis. And I'm going to have two different trend points um, that I'll show. So field 1 or column 1, and then field 2. So 0, 1, and 2. Keep uh, note of that. So these will be my different data points, column B and C. And note that they have uh, starting off with the same data points, but as we get going here, the data starts to differ a little bit uh, in the middle of the pack. And we'll notice that a little bit more visually when we, when we show this on the trend. So I'm going to close that. And something else that I've done is I've created a, a small little background. You can see that this is just a 36 by 36 pixel bitmap that is a uh, dark green with a light green a uh, couple of lines on it and we'll use that for some backgrounds uh, of the, the uh, trend itself. Also here under the history or HST folder within my project uh, I've copied a file from the bin folder of where Indusoft Web Studio is installed. Now depending on where you've installed that you'll, you'll navigate to your um, where Indusoft Web Studio is installed, go into the bin folder and copy this hist to text.exe back into the history folder here and I'm going to show you that this is empty now except for that we'll eventually show you how to use this uh, file so move this off screen here and so now uh, what you should have is you should have um, uh, created this navigation to get to the trend 1 and trend 2 make sure you're on the trend 1 screen here and just so we have a little bit more screen real estate I'm going to close uh, database spy and the output window just so we have a little bit more viewable area here. Um, we're going to put first the uh, real-time trend on the screen. So if we go to the data objects tab, now you may see that tab in full view. I've, mine is reduced because of the resolution that I'm recording video in. But I'm going to go here to the trend control object and I'm going to place it on the screen and keep it fairly large so we can get some good viewing area here and leave some space here on the left hand side. We're going to put some sliders that will get some, some values in there. Um, we're going to add two pens to this trend and, and show you how we can do that in, in uh, real time or display those in real time. Uh, here under the graphics tab I want to go to the symbol uh, under sliders and grab slider 1 
place it here on the screen. Looks like I already have one of those. We'll talk about this message when we get to the symbols, but I'm going to say yes to overwrite it. And now we're going to configure this to go to the uh, a new tag called trend temperature, T-R-E-N-D, temperature. And it's going to ask me to create that. And I'm just going to keep that as integer. And now I'm going to copy this down by holding down my control key and drag it down here and change this to trend oops I need to double click on that change this to trend pressure so now that I have these two tags and I'll also make that as an integer I have trend temperature and trend pressure now I can add those two as points on this or pens on this trend I'm going to double click on the trend control object and go into points. Now you can see that we have a lot of different configuration options and here's one called data sources. If we don't configure the data sources by default it will it will trend tag names. So let's go here under points or what some uh, uh, type of products call pens and we'll label the fields that will show up down here in the label on the legend area of the um, trend. So here's the tag that's going to be used and here's the label. The label is what shows up down here and the tag is what actually gets uh, uh, trended. So I'm going to click off of this field and then double click on it and I'm going to choose the trend temperature field or tag and then here under the label just to show you that this is different uh, I'm going to put in temp and just abbreviate temperature in here. And I'm going to do something when I bring in pressure maybe I'll even uh, not even abbreviate pressure but I'll do PSI we could do units uh, elsewhere in this as, as well, but uh, you'll see the point here. And we'll go in here and configure this as trend pressure as a tag. Notice here that the data source is shown as tag. Uh, eventually in this video we'll get some other data sources in there. I could configure the colors here. I also have the option to go here under style and configure the colors. Here for the temperature, I'm just going to change this to red. And uh, we'll keep everything else the same. Click on OK. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, we have some other features here we'll come back and talk about. But let's show you the very basics of how to get a couple of pens trending. Say yes. I'll click on run. And as long as I have my navigation set up here, I'll click on trend one. And I can see the points coming in. My values are currently zero for those tags. I'll ramp these up here a little bit with the sliders. And come back down. Now you can see that uh, those values. Uh, are following the tags on the trend. So that's about as simple as it as it'll get. So we'll, we're going to cover some more more details. Here I can uh, stop, pause, and restart. Uh, and again, notice that this is, or remember that this is a real-time trend. Therefore, it's not logging. So if I change screens, it has stopped logging. And if I come back, it starts all over again. So that data is lost, and there's some reasons why, why maybe you would not want to save uh, the data and just start over every particular time. That There are reasons for doing that, and maybe you don't need historical. So, But uh, for a lot of applications, you will want historical information. So let's go configure that and show you how to do that. So that uh, trend object that we put on here is the view portion of the trending. And separate from that is uh, the place where we configure the logging. Uh, you don't need to use one or the other. In fact, you can use them independently. You can show uh, the values without logging, which we just did, or you can log them without showing them, uh, or you can do both. So let's go here under the Tasks tab and right-click on the Trend and insert uh, what we call a Trend Worksheet. Now we can give this a description, uh, Trend uh, Log or whatever maybe we're doing. This is just a description and this does not affect functionality. This is for your documentation purposes only. Notice here that the history format is proprietary or database. We're going to come back and cover the database functionality when we get to the databases video. Here we're under proprietary and that's going to log to that history folder, that .hst uh, format. So right now the way that this is going to work, we're going to um, log any tags that are in here and we're going to put the temp I'm sorry the trend temperature and the trend pressure I've double clicked on those fields and selected those here 
and we're going to log these uh, based on what this says here, which this checkbox is save on trigger, and here's the trigger field. We're using the seconds clock from the, uh, or the seconds tag that comes from the seconds clock of the computer where the runtime is running. Now this will be a value that will count from 0 to 59 and start over, just like the seconds clock in the computer, and every time that changes, it will cause this to trigger and log these values uh, to the file. Now, what is it? Where does it store that? It stores that in the HST folder in your project, and uh, we'll go take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, alternatively, you have the uh, option to check this checkbox and save on tag change. Now, what that will do is any tags that are listed in this worksheet, uh, if any one tag changes, it will save the entire sheet. I said alternatively, but uh, you can have both of these. Uh, so maybe this trigger is a long period of time and you want to save just when one of those tags changes. You can do these uh, uh, at the same time. You can have both of those checked at the same time. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to log every second and trend the temperature and the pressure. Now we do have some advanced settings, which we'll go into. Um, also here is the dead band. Now the dead band is a, is a uh, number that will... Uh, allow the trend not to save if it stays within that range. So for example, if we get uh, up to uh, 100, let's say, uh, as the value, and we say we don't want it to log small changes of maybe 5 or so, we might put 5 in here. And if we get a value up to 100, it would have to go, let's say, below 95 before it started logging again, and, and you would not catch those small variations. Depending on your process, that uh, might be very relevant. So, okay, so we've added temp trend temperature and trend pressure in here. And other than that, we haven't really changed anything. I added the description. And I'm going to save this and close this. And it's going to prompt us to save this as the trend one worksheet. And we'll say yes. And we'll save this as sheet number one. Now what that's done is let me go back into my... Um, this back on screen here, sorry, so you can see it. My project folder, and here under the configuration, it's saved that trend1.trd folder. Now that's our trend worksheet folder that we just created in that, that worksheet. If we go back into the history file, you can see that's essentially empty. Let me move that off screen. We'll come back to that in a moment. So now that I have that set up as, as saving historical data, I can close my screen here, click on Run. Go into the Trend 1 screen, and now I'm saving data to the proprietary format in the .hst, or the .hst folder uh, in a .hst file format. We'll come back and take a look at that in a moment. So here I'm simulating some tag changes. Now these could be coming from a PLC, a database, or anywhere, and we'll go, go walk through some of that, but I'm just simulating those so you can see those. Um, quickly here, I can pause the trend. Uh, play the trend. I can change screens and come back and you can see that the data is still there unlike the real-time trend where that data will be lost if you change screens. I can pause and let's say I want to take and examine this this uh, peak right here. I can use some of my zoom tools. I can use my horizontal uh, zoom. You can see all these two little vertical lines. What I can do is select that and select my starting point and my end point and zoom in right on that uh, individual point. I also now have this blue line here which is my cursor and that's also enabled via this icon up here on the toolbar and I can then move my cursor around and it will show me the value where that cursor crosses the trend line and uh, in, in another part of the video I'll show you where that uh, uh, cursor value can also uh, be uh, sent out to a tag as well. I'm going to cancel my zoom and some other features. Let's continue to play this. Now, what looks like my uh, values have gone off screen, uh, they have. And uh, you can see here is the duration. And I'm going to go back in here and type in hours, minutes, and seconds. So I'll just use my keyboard hours, minutes, and it might not let me do this. Let's say uh, five minutes, zero five, uh, colon zero, zero. Say OK, and it doesn't recognize it as a valid entry, so I can do that right down here. I'll do 0, 0, colon, 0, 5, colon, 0, and now this will show a duration 
from the left hand side to the right hand side uh, of five minutes. Now this is the current time here on the right hand side and this duration or five minutes ago here on the left hand side. So that's the way that that works. Um, let me go turn off that keypad just so that we don't get that popping back up again. I turned that on in a previous video. I'm going to exit and come back to Project Viewer and turn off the virtual keyboard here so now we won't get that anymore. Come back into uh, my graphics. Go here on the Trend 1 screen. And let's talk a little bit about the configuration of the toolbar and the, the legend uh, as we go across. You know what? Let me go back in and, and just cover a few more of these tools here. So let's uh, continue to run. Go back into the trend screen. I can configure the legend properties that are down here. I can uh, change my pen styles. I can add pens and remove pens. I can have multiple selections. So here I have these two pens are on two different uh, scales. So I can combine those if I wanted to uh, maybe show those uh, how relative they are to each other. I could just click on this and that will combine those. It also combines their scales as well. I can see here 0 to 100 for the temperature, 0 to 100 for the pressure. I can combine those and since they're the same scale uh, I can see 0 to 100. Let's zoom in on this a little bit here. And so show maybe just that range so I can get a little bit more detail and see just how those are. Uh, I can also, again, enable my cursor or disable my cursor. I can set auto scale. Now this is interesting. Let's pause this. So when I uh, move these uh, sliders to simulate the data, I made I'm pretty sure that I wasn't going to go all the way down to zero or all the way up to 100. Uh, if you don't set the scale uh, to particular value it will try to auto scale or you can click on this icon and it will auto scale based on the data that's shown in the duration or in the window here so I can click on auto scale and it will auto scale to the, the values that were shown here so you can see that I only moved those sliders between uh, 12 and 81 or 20 and 87 and it scaled that to try to give you the maximum uh, that you can see there uh, we can also print and do some SPC values now statistical process control um, in the past has been very difficult to do. Here we can just click on this icon and we can show min, max, average, uh, and the standard deviation. Uh, very simply to select those I can just say show all. and We could do line or shaded type and I'll just click on OK. And let me zoom back out here a little bit. And I'll change my duration. We'll do hours. Um, minutes, I'll go to five minutes and zero seconds here. And now we can see that this, the SPC values of the min and max values are here and the let me zoom out a little bit here. So now we can see the min and max values, the standard deviations uh, of all those. And we didn't really have to do any programming. It's just click on the icons and you can see that. We can do the same thing with the shading and see those shaded values. So it can give you some very good statistical um, information. So I'm just going to hide those, turn that off. There's my values. I'll hit play again. We can see that we're still recording in the background. Um, down here we have the ability to configure this uh, legend. Uh, I'm not going to do all of these, but for example, if I wanted to remove this temperature during runtime, I can click on that and uh, get rid of that. So now it's just logging the pressure. I can come back here and add a pen, and this is one that was in the list, but it's now been removed, so I can just say OK and oops, I need to add the pen, uh, select that line, then click on OK and it comes back in. I can temporarily hide uh, a pen, so there I've hidden the pressure and I can bring that back in to view. I can also change the style, so for example this, this red pen here for the temperature, if I click on this and I want to change this red to maybe a uh, dark green, maybe a mid green here, click on OK and I can see that that changes. It's not a very visible color, but you can see that it changed. Let me change it back to red here. Say OK. And when the scales are not combined, uh, if I have them uh, separate here, uh, I'm sorry, when they are combined, then I have the chance of turning on or off individual scales. Let's say I wanted to turn this scale off here. I can just click on that and I'll get rid of that. Um, so some very good viewable options there. Um, 
let's go on. Uh, now that we have some, some data log, let's exit and let's see what's happened in our uh, history folder. Let me come back into the project folder here and look in the history folder. We can see now that we've got uh, a historical data uh, log here. Now this first, uh, this file name is structured such that it's the worksheet number, which is worksheet 01, the year, the month, and the day. So this is uh, May 23rd of, of 2012 when I'm doing this recording, and that's the name of the uh, file. Now we log 24 hours worth of data from midnight to midnight in a single file. And this name has to stay this way so that we can go back and retrieve that historically and we know where to get that information. If you have a process that is uh, not uh, a 24 hour worth of data trend, um, it will still log that data or if you want to log it to a separate file, uh, we have a, a facility for what we call batch trending as well and I'll show you that in a moment. But here, this format is not really in a humanly readable format. Um, it's saved in a proprietary format. Let me open up the, the uh, help system here and show you where that is. We go here under help and we go under background tasks, trends, and so here you can see that uh, I've navigated to the uh, trends, alarm events and trends section of the help and here under trends you can see some information about configuring the trend worksheet. Now the proprietary format is our own uh, kind of compacted uh, format and it's not really humanly readable uh, but it does describe in here how to use this hist to text uh, uh, feature that we have and there's a couple of different ways to do this so let me get out of the help here and come back into the uh, history folder so now where we're at here is the history file has been saved in that proprietary format. And if I try to open that up with, uh, let's say, Notepad here, and click on OK, and choose Notepad, not to do that all the time, and I bring that into view, I can see that some of my tags are in here, um, but the rest of this stuff, there's my temperature and my pressure, but the rest of this stuff is not really uh, readable or useful. So let's figure out how we can convert that. Now that I have this his to text uh, file here, I have a couple of different options. I could use my command prompt and execute this by uh, typing in his to text.exe space and the name of this file uh, and, and using that as, as documented. Uh, there's another way that we can do that. There's a built-in scripting function within IndieSoft Web Studio. So wherever you can use a script, you could call this function and have it automatically convert this into a text file. or uh, there's another way to do this. I can just take this HST file and use my mouse cursor, drag it onto the uh, executable, and when I let go, it'll automatically execute that. It'll create a header file and a text file, and if I open up the text file with Notepad, you can see here the date and the time and the values uh, that those were recorded. So those are that's something we could open up with Notepad or even Excel, and that's what's in the text file. What's contained in the header file, you can open that up. And we'll use Notepad again and see that it uh, contains the number of tags and the tags. Now those are kept separate so that we can just see the raw values if we want to and apply those headers on the top if we need to. So uh, that's uh, the hist to text function or the uh, executable. And remember that you can do that as a script function as well. Uh, so let's move this off screen, go back into the uh, trend object here and um, let's see the next thing that we want to do is a couple of different uh, features here so let's say that I have the uh, uh, axes let's take a look at this uh, setup here uh, I can change this to numeric which we'll do I can change the scales the duration so that default duration is one minute I can change that uh, in here and I can change the color of the grids in the background here, I can do uh, different, whether or not the time bar is available or the scroll bar is available, I can turn those on or off. Uh, I can also take that cursor position, and this is my x-axis cursor position here. I can get the uh, position of that. I can put a tag in here, and that will allow me to change the position of that cursor by using a, an external value, not necessarily touching it with the mouse or, or touch screen. 
and that will receive the value out. Now this is the x-axis. The y-axis is done somewhere else. Uh, and then also position here, I can uh, click on this, and I can change the orientation of my, my uh, trend. It does not have to be horizontal. I can turn it vertical, and I can change my orientation of my labels, uh, my directions, placements of, of where various things are. So a lot of configuration options in here. I'll click on OK. And let's go back into the points for a moment and let's take a look at the scales. Let's say for the pressure here under style uh, I want to change or fill this with either a custom pattern which can be a graphic or a solid color. I'm going to use that um, uh, green grid as a custom pattern and now this should normally be in your project folder which was where I placed it. Uh, I'm going to go back here and choose that and this gives me a warning that if it's not in the web folder of your project it might not be viewable by web thin clients so depending on if you're going to use a web application you may want to uh, put this in your web folder and and use it from there but I'm just going to use it for my project folder this way I don't have to put a path associated with it click on yes and I'll make that transparent to 50 percent say OK and now when I click on OK you can see that grid on there in fact let me uh, turn that so it's not 50% uh, transparent. Uh, let's just turn that down to zero transparent. And now we'll get that full color of that. And now when we show this on the screen, you can see how this is viewable here. I can change my values and I can get that graphic to show up behind that. Now this could be uh, a green to yellow to red. This could be a water pattern. This could be a, a type of product. It could be a company logo in there. A lot of different flexibilities that you have uh, in there. But notice how, uh, if you remember when I brought that graphic in, it was just uh, simple four squares. And notice that it's repeating uh, in there as well. Well, it's kind of tiled in there. Uh, so let's come back and click on yes to get out of there. Go back into this trend. And I'm going to change that now. Instead of being the custom pattern, I'll change it to a solid color and I'll set that to a 50% transparent and I'll choose a color maybe that this pressure is kind of a light blue and now I can come back in here and run and you can see that that is a light blue fill there and it's set up with some transparency on it. Now I did that on purpose so that uh, you can see when we stack these scales here I can see through that and see points that may have occurred behind or underneath other values. Uh, otherwise, those would be hidden if that was a solid color. So, some tips there. Exit out of this. Back. And another feature that we have is, let's say that we have data, similar data, or we're trying to trend against a known good value uh, versus uh, current values. One of the things I can do is come in here under points, and let's say maybe the the temperature was a known good value and the pressure was um, uh, somehow needed to be related or I needed to somehow tie those two together, view those in a similar fashion. One of the things that I can do oops, is here under the options is I have a lot of different choices. I'm just going to show you this x-axis offset. Uh, I'm going to put a new tag in here called offset and I'm just going to make this an integer value and I'm going to put a slider here underneath the screen and this slider is based on duration or number of seconds that are shown here. So I'm going to grab a symbol. I'm going to grab a horizontal slider here. Uh, let's take this one here. I'll just put it here underneath the screen. And yes, I want to overwrite that for this. Come back here. And I want to configure this for, uh, I can do 0 to 100. Let me do a maximum of 100. Whoops and minimum of negative 100 and that will give us that number of seconds and we'll just use the tag called offset and now when we show the trend and we've got these values in here and let's say that uh, maybe this was a little bit offset or this happened but I need to somehow line those up I can pause this and now I can actually scroll this trend forward and backward and it'll even be more apparent if I stack these on top of each other here 
maybe I need to see when did that exactly line up. I don't have much uh, granularity here because I used a small slider, but uh, maybe I need to know how those are related to each other so I can slide those back and forth. Uh, so that's a, a nice feature there as well. Let's come back into here and take a look at further in those options. Uh, here under options is uh, a description. I can put engineering units. Here's where I might put uh, degrees Fahrenheit or PSI. Uh, I can set some limits. Let me show you how to do the uh, limits here. Let's say that uh, on this pressure, which is this black trend here, uh, with the black line on it, let's say when uh, that value reaches over 90% that I want to change something about that. And I'm going to click on OK here, and I'm going to go back into the style, and now that I have that high limit set or that out of range, I can tell it when it's out of limits, uh, oops, cancel that because I wanted to do this on the uh, black one here. We'll set this uh, high limit to 90 and now here when we're going to go out of limits we're not going to use the normal settings we'll use some different settings and we'll change that to um, here we'll change it to red and notice that this line settings has its own little section here it's different than the fill we're not changing the fill pattern only when this is out of limits we're going to change this to this other color. Maybe we'll make it a thicker line uh, as well. So now we can do this and run. And now when I trend this value here, it shows normally as black, but then when I get above 90, it changes to a thicker color line and changes to a red color so I can very easily see where that's crossed uh, a critical value and, and capture that visually so that makes it very easy to see. Let's turn this back to the development system here. Uh, another thing that I should point out is that you can also copy these uh, lines and paste them into Excel, make changes in Excel and paste them back or even copy them within uh, Indusoft Web Studio and it will also get all the information under the style and the options in the SPC as well. Let's uh, take a quick look at the SPC uh, button here. The values that we were showing when we configured, uh, clicked on the icon during runtime for average, min, max, standard deviation and uh, the number that counts for the um, SPC, those were being shown on screen we would need to put tag names in here if we wanted to get those values into tags. Notice that there's a configuration for each individual pen so that we can get those SPC values out for each individual pen as it's shown uh, on the screen. Uh, so that's the points dialog. Uh, now let's take another look here at uh, some of these other sources here. Let's go into legend. Uh, so here's the legend across the bottom of the screen and I can add and remove different uh, items uh, so, for example, some of the standard deviations, the description, uh, and I can add and remove those. If you want to configure each one of those and how much space they take up, so for example, the current uh, value, if we click on the current value here, this will let us set the number of pixels, the alignment, the label, uh, some different things about that particular item down here in the legend. And each one of these uh, changes depending on what you click on and, and how you see it. So you can configure uh, those different things uh, through that in the or different columns here in the, in the legend. You can also turn off the legend completely by clicking on this. and You can change the um, order that they appear from left to right by moving individual items up and down uh, using this. So we'll click on cancel so we don't make any accidental changes there. And now we'll go configure the toolbar here in the toolbar, we can see that uh, we have access to each one of these icons or each one of these tools for uh, pausing and stopping, uh, the period, the different zoom levels uh, in there, and whether or not we want them to show or hide, whether or not we want them available to the operators. Um, this is the tooltip that appears, so if you happen to, in your process, you call these something different than, than we've named them, you can change uh, the, the tooltip or the, the hint text that pops up there. And because uh, maybe you don't uh, uh, want to use these particular icons that we've used and you want to make your own, uh, we can put a tag name in here and configure that so that when you uh, either toggle that 
tag or, or change it from 0 to 1 depending on the, the functionality. Uh, it will turn that feature on and then you can use it and uh, take a look at the help system to see how we can do that. You can make your own uh, toolbar, if you will, out of this. So that's that. Uh, we'll go back into the advanced. Uh, we'll go into the advanced here. Now, these are different uh, run mode options. How fast does this uh, trend update? In this case, it's based on the seconds clock, but we could trigger that whenever we wanted to. Um, automatically jump to the current time on run. And so, let's see, here's another thing called the runtime configuration. If you remember that I changed some pen colors and some different sizes, we have the ability during runtime to uh, put a file name in here. We can do this in curly brackets as well. And during runtime, if we save a particular color combination and fill pattern and different things that we like, we can trigger this to save to that name. And then we can also put another tag in here to trigger reloading that back. So we can have multiple configurations during runtime that we can save and reload during runtime that supports that. Um, let's go on to exporting to a file. We can export a uh, graphic in different formats here of what the trend looks like. So we can save that off and maybe embed that in reports, uh, do different things with that. Decimation. Now decimation is a new feature that we added in version 7 uh, that supports uh, combining uh, a lot of data down to a small area. Now, uh, essentially, the, what this is used for is, is let's say you have uh, hundreds of thousands or thousands of points uh, in a database and you bring those in, uh, but you don't have necessarily that number of pixels that you can display on the screen. Uh, IndieSoft Web Studio will, will reduce the amount of data shown based on the actual data so that you can see uh, as much information as you can without uh, uh, showing it in a way that is irrelevant. For example, if you have millions of points and you bring those in from a database, that'll take a long time, as well as you'll probably just see a solid rectangular bar with no no real information on it. Uh, by doing this, by using this decimation, we can get some more valid data out of it and show them in real results. Also here we can have uh, options for the, the keyboard as well, whether or not translation works. I'll click on OK here. And now what I want to do is step back into the um, uh, Trend 2 screen. Let's uh, close this and close this Trend screen and open up the Trend 2 screen. Now here I'm going to configure a trend for, um, let's see, for uh, XY plot. So I'm going to go here under Data Objects and put a new Trend object on the screen. And I'm going to use that uh, trend CSV file that I have. So in order to configure this, uh, I'm going to go into this trend and set up the axes instead of being date time based, that it's numeric based. And I think for now, that's all I have to do is click on OK here. And now what I have to do is set up a data source. So unlike when we just configured the tags here, I'm going to set up a new data source by clicking on new here under the data source. And we'll call this. Um, uh, let's see, text, or we'll call this XY plot, and hit create. Now this is going to come from a text file, a batch uh, that we've loaded, a database, a text file, and this one is irrelevant, this one's not uh, in the product, so uh, please ignore that, but uh, I'm going to configure this uh, to come from a text file, and now I have to point it to where the text file is at. I'm going to use data source settings here and choose my file and point it to my trend.csv that I showed you earlier in the video here and I can tell it how it's uh, separated and how it's delimited in this case mine is separated by commas say OK and uh, given that a name oh the first column the x-axis field is column 0 so I want to tell it which which one to use for that click on OK and now let's go back into the points Go back into the points, and now this has changed a little bit. So where we had tags here before for the data source, now I have XY plot that I want to use as the data source. So here maybe I have uh, trend one, um, or yeah, we'll do trend one, and the field that I want to use for that is the second column or field number one. If they're zero, one, two, then I want the second one, which is number one. And maybe here I have trend two, and the value will be so from data source XY plot, and that will be uh, field two. Now I'm going to change uh, trend one to be red, 
and I'm going to go here under the styles and set this uh, well, I can do this here as well as red and instead of showing lines I want to show just dots or, or markers and I'm going to choose let's say a triangular marker for this one and we'll make it a little bit larger we'll make this one five and say okay and for this one I'll keep this one as black but I'll change this one to uh, instead of a triangular marker maybe I'll just make this a dot and keep it smaller say okay so now, if we don't want to draw lines between those, we have uh, we can go here under Options, and this is the break interval. And the break interval is described in the help, but uh, we can shut off uh, the amount of time between where we draw lines or reduce that. In this case, to not draw lines, I'm going to put in uh, negative 1 in here, and that will shut that off. Say OK. Go into the Options here, and under the break interval. I'll shut this one down uh, from drawing lines to negative one. And <clears throat> let's see, uh, go through. Uh, also here under advanced is our update trigger. We don't need this to update. We only need to read from that file once. So rather than scrolling this off the edge of the screen, I'll just remove that update trigger, say OK. And let's see, do I have everything? I've configured the X and Y values, the name and the source in here. Uh, I've set the uh, X axis to column 0. I've set my points. And I've changed, let's see, uh, looking at a list here off screen, make sure I've got everything. And set the X axis range. Oh, let's go into the X axis range and uh, my values went from 0 to almost 350 there, so I'll set that up here. Or I could do auto scale when I'm running. And I'll leave the, the y axis uh, so I can auto scale that here. And I think now we can go ahead and run this, save this, and run. And this should update from my text file. And I can see those samples of data. And because I left that as auto scale for my uh, y axis, I can click here on auto scale. And now I can see those values uh, in here. Now, um, at first glance, these may look similar. But if I stack them on top of each other, now we can see that it's spread out a little bit. And remember when I highlighted that there was some uh, values in the middle that uh, after the beginning part of that started out with the same data, and then those data points got a little bit off track. So now you can see how uh, similar or where maybe something went wrong and uh, take a look at that in your process and compare those values uh, to each other. Also notice that uh, it's, it is possible in an XY plot to have multiple points uh, at the same X axis. So um, it is not a time base where I can only have one sample per, per time. I can actually have multiple samples. and This can move back on itself. So you can get very creative in what you can do with uh, XY plots uh, here as well. Oh, let's see. Let me go back and take a look at the configuration of the trend worksheet again. Here under the trend worksheet, um, I can configure this for, uh, instead of proprietary, I can configure this for database, which we'll do in the database video. I'm going to go here under advanced, and here we can give this a name. Uh, this can be uh, in curly brackets, uh, string tag. <clears throat> excuse me, that can be the name of the batch and then a tag in here that when I toggle this tag uh, it will start and stop uh, that batch from being logged. Uh, now this worksheet would then log to a a file that would not be the uh, trend history file that we looked at before. It would be given its own name based on the tag that we have in here. So here we can do individual batches that would maybe not be logged uh, as the 24-hour time period. Also in here uh, is some, some advanced settings for uh, disk space control, some housekeeping if you will. This is separate from the batch. Uh, notice that this little section is, is off by itself here. The history, lifetime, and days. If we set this, this up as zero, which is default, it does no housekeeping at all. If we set this up for, let's say we want to keep a month's worth of data around uh, and let's say, or 30 days or 60 days. Let's say we want to keep 60 days worth of data <coughs> around. <coughs> we put a 60 in here, and this is a, a FIFO, so that after, uh, on the 61st day, the first one will be erased, and then the new data can come in. 
So then once a, the new data can come in, uh, then it can keep uh, disk space use uh, so you don't eventually run out of disk space. So I'm just going to leave this back to zero so that we can uh, uh, do no housekeeping or do our housekeeping on our own. Also we have the choice of compress or zip these uh, or archive these uh, after a certain number of days. So maybe you want to keep 90 days worth of data around but uh, after 30 days uh, we start compressing them so we can keep track of that ind uh, independently of each other. Uh, also, there's some, some ways that we can track bad quality. If we get bad quality, we want to uh, trend that or log that. We can store the min and max or max value, max value or min value, or not as a number. What what? How do we want to store that? And we can put a tag in here and disable all the saving as well. Um, so let's see. You need to do that. And let's see. We've covered everything in the trend worksheet. Oh, you can have multiple worksheets. And if we set a worksheet up as a batch, then that basically takes the data and puts it into the batch and not in the 24-hour period. Uh, so if you wanted to do uh, other types of trending or log different tags, maybe for different operations in the machine, you would create additional worksheets. You can have up to 999 worksheets um, created. And it really depends on the, the horsepower of the processor that you're using. Uh, let's see. Let's take a quick review of what I've uh, covered. We've covered the points. We've covered um, filling below with a, a graphic or a um, color value. We've zoomed. Uh, we can change some of the properties of this during runtime down here, the legend. Um, we've showed the real-time trend. We've showed logging by adding the trend worksheet here under the tasks. We've added the the trend worksheet here that that creates the logging capability we've uh, converted from the HST format into text uh, we've talked about batch and doing disk housekeeping talked about trend um, let's see what else we oh we set the high limits you could also do that low limits SPC we've covered we've covered an XY plot in its most basic format and uh, if you want to take a look at some other features, uh, also don't forget to go look at the PC demo that's included on the Indusoft Web Studio install. Uh, that covers it for the trends. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.